Federal Reserve does not want you to make more money. If the central bank does nothing, then you're looking at a huge raise next year, and the central bank can't let that happen. And they're going to let the whole economy on fire to make sure you don't get a raise. What's up, guys? I'm nobody special. And with the Fed scheduled to raise interest rates by another 75 basis points on Wednesday in Jerome Powell's press conference, I want to go over a couple of sound bites that I've heard in some of his recent press conferences and give you an idea of just what the Fed is planning and what it means for you. And these guys have a huge impact on your life. They're moving you around like pawns on a chessboard, and it's causing havoc in the economy. Now, to understand what the Fed is doing, first you have to understand what the Fed's job is. The Fed has a dual mandate. They have two jobs. Number one is to maximize employment. and Number two is to maintain price stability, i.e. control inflation. Well, right now, believe it or not, the Federal Reserve is failing at both of those mandates. Now, we all know about the inflation problem running out of control, so obviously the Fed isn't really succeeding there. But the Federal Reserve is also not succeeding in maximizing employment right now. Even though unemployment rates are at a historic low, down at just 3.6%, if you actually look at the labor market, supply and demand are way, way out of whack. So the Fed is failing at both of its mandates right now. And just like every academic, when things don't look right on paper, they start moving pieces around and they cause untold havoc in the ecosystem that is the economy. With that, we are going to shrink my big melon of a head. And let's take a look at a couple of charts. First, what we're looking at right here, this is the St. Louis Fred website. This is the actual unemployment rate going all the way back to 1998. Now, you see, we've had some bumps in the past with some previous recessions and the global financial crisis. And then we got that huge spike in the unemployment rate that came after the pandemic. And now here we are. You can see the unemployment rate has really dropped substantially. If you zoom in to the point where we no longer have that huge peak from the pandemic, look all the way down here, three consecutive, four consecutive months of 3.6% unemployment. That's a really good unemployment rate. So it kind of looks like the Fed has already maximized employment, but not so fast. There's a couple of other charts you have to look at that say, no, they're not really succeeding in that maximum employment mandate. Check this out. This is the labor force participation rate. This is the percentage of people that are actually working in the economy right now. And you can see that peaked in the years just before the dot-com bubble burst, and it's been trending down ever since. Got a little steeper downward after the global financial crisis. It recovered somewhat during the late 20 teens, and then wham, the pandemic hits. Millions of people left the workforce, and a lot of them didn't come back yet. And you can see right now, the labor force participation rate is struggling in the low 60s at 62.3%. So while the unemployment rate looks like we have maximum employment, you've actually got millions of people who are out of work because they just gave up for whatever reason. Maybe it's because childcare got so expensive and it's not worth it for them to work. Or maybe they're just saying, you know what, the wages that are being offered aren't enough to convince me to go back into work, and so I'm going to stay home. And you can see that even more reflected in this chart, also at the St. Louis Fred. This is job openings. This is the total non-farm job openings in the United States. And there is a huge amount of open positions in the economy right now. Over 11 million unfilled jobs in the economy. Now, how is it if the Fed is supposed to maintain maximum employment, We've got this low number of people who are participating in the labor market. And at the same time, we've got this ridiculously high number of job openings. So what gives? Well, the problem is price, supply, and demand. And the labor market is not immune to the effects of supply and demand any more than the oil markets or the real estate market is. And right now, we have got way more demand for jobs than we have supply of people willing to fill those jobs. So what is the natural market inclination in this situation? Well, it would be the price of those jobs has to go up. In other words, they need to pay more in order to convince people to come back to work. Now, that has not happened yet so far. Employers have resisted an increase in wages, even though we've got 9.1% headline inflation, realistically more like 18% inflation if you go by shadowstats.com, and yet wages have only risen 3 or 4%. And so there are not enough sellers in the marketplace. With 3%, 4% wage hikes, nobody is willing to sell their labor for that price. So the price has to rise. And so far, that's not happening. And so the labor sellers, i.e. the workers, are not coming back to work. And this chart right here, 
this huge spike in job openings is why the Fed is about to take a blowtorch to the economy. Because remember, the other mandate of the Fed is price stability. Well, if everybody starts getting a big raise, that means they're going to have more money to spend, and that's going to add to the inflation problems right now. You see, we only have inflation right now because of all of this money that's been dumped into the system by central banks, not just the Fed, the ECB and everybody else, the Bank of Japan, all over the world. And we've also got shortages being caused by this ridiculous ESG movement that's limiting energy supply and causing famine and wars all over the world. Well, people are leaving the workforce because their wages aren't rising as fast as the cost of living. And so the wages need to rise to bring those people back. The Fed can't let that happen. They don't want you making more money because what are you going to do with that money? You're probably going to go spend it. And their mandate is to keep prices down. If you make more money and you go out and spend it, then the prices are going to rise. So understand, Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve, they can't allow you to get that big raise next year, which your employer at the current moment has to offer you in order to convince you to stick around because the rate of inflation is so high. So what does the Fed do? Well, enter key phrases like demand destruction. The Fed has been using that phrase, demand destruction, or bring down demand, an awful lot lately. And understand, when you hear demand destruction, what the Fed is actually saying is more suffering for poor people, people's lives getting more difficult. And for that, we can look at Jerome Powell's own words over some of his most recent press conferences. Here's Jerome Powell at the March FOMC press conference. Now, here he's being asked about the tight labor market. And listen closely to what he says. What you have is 1.7 plus job openings for every unemployed person. So that's, that's a very, very tight labor market. And the idea is we're trying to better align demand and supply, let's just say, in the labor market. So it would actually, if, if, if you were just moving down the number of job openings so that they were more like one-to-one, -one, uh, you would have less upward pressure on wages. So what Jerome Powell just said there is he needs to bring supply and demand more back in line. Seems like a harmless statement. But remember, he's talking about the labor market right now. So he wants to reduce demand in the labor market. In other words, he needs to destroy jobs. He needs to destroy job openings. Remember that chart with the 11 million job openings? He needs to bring that down. Why? Because if he doesn't, the money you make is going to go up, and he can't have that happen. Basically, across the economy, we'd like to slow demand so that it's better aligned with supply, give supply at the same time time to recover, and get into a, a better, you know, a, a better alignment of supply and demand, and that over time should bring inflation down. Now he made a pretty bold statement right there, and it's something that he said: give supply time to recover. Remember, he's talking about the labor market. So what does he mean when he says give supply time to recover? He's saying he needs to bring people back into the workforce. Now there's two ways to bring people back into the workforce. The first way is to offer a better wage. We've already ruled that out because Jerome Powell can't have that happen. That makes his inflation problem worse. Can't have people living better. The other way is by inflicting such economic hardship on people that they are forced back into the workforce. And that's when we get into the more sinister side of this because there's one trend that I'm starting to see emerging, and that is the trend of retirees coming back into the workforce. Check this out in Washington Post back in May. Millions retired early during the pandemic. Many are now returning to work, new data shows. A tight labor market, better COVID outlooks, and higher wages are luring retirees back to the workforce. That's kind of an incomplete statement there when they're saying, oh yeah, the tight labor market, not so much. Wages have not risen all that much that it's more money luring people back. Remember, the Fed is trying to prevent that from happening. So it's not higher wages. Better COVID outlooks, I doubt it. But it's not until the third or fourth paragraph of this article when they really get into the truth of why retirees are re-entering the workforce. And that's this statement down here. In some cases, workers say rising costs and the inability to keep up while on fixed income are factoring heavily into their decisions as well. It's inflation that's bringing retirees back into the workforce. Their cost of living has gone up and these folks are on a fixed income, whether it's social security, pension, or drawing down their 401ks. Well, their cost of living is skyrocketing and they've got a nest egg that needs to last for the rest of their lives. And now they're realizing, heck, with the increase in the cost of living, that money we set aside is no longer enough. 
but it gets even worse than that because remember most of these are baby boomers that have their wealth in the stock market or the bond market and take a look at the s p 500 so far this year down almost 20 percent off its highs from january remember folks a lot of these retirees a lot of these baby boomers have most of their wealth in stocks and bonds and so if you had set all this money aside you had this nice big nest egg and at the start of the year it was enough to last you through the rest of your life well now it's down 20 percent maybe it doesn't last as long as you thought it did and the bond market doesn't look any better check out this chart of 10-year treasury yields remember yields and prices in bonds are inversely correlated since the start of the year the yields on the 10-year treasury have almost doubled that means the value of those bonds has tanked in that same time frame and where do most retirees keep their money in low risk bonds so this is the nest egg of baby boomers going up in smoke look no further than blackrock's most recent earnings report when they said they lost 1.7 trillion dollars of their clients money in the first half of this year that is retirees savings going away and now they need to go back to work so understand when jerome powell makes statements like give supply time to come back up when he's talking about the labor force what he's talking about is deliberately imposing economic hardship on people retirees people who left the workforce in order to force them back into the labor market. He can't allow the wages to increase in order to lure those people back into the labor market because that would make his inflation problem worse, or at least so he thinks. So instead, he's going to take a blowtorch to the economy and he's going to crash asset prices. He's going to crash bond prices. He's going to destroy job openings. And he is going to make life so difficult for the poor and the middle class that they're forced to re-enter the workforce. That's what Jerome Powell means when he talks about demand destruction, or bringing supply and demand back in line when he's talking about the labor market. He's talking about making life more difficult for poor people. It's about making sure you don't get that big raise next year that you would definitely get if he didn't mess up the economy. Keep in mind, with the great resignation and the tightness in the labor market, these business owners will have to pay higher wages if something doesn't change. And that something is Jerome Powell taking a wrecking ball to the United States economy. Yes, they are doing this on purpose. And I just want to remind you guys that I will be live streaming Jerome Powell's press conference this Wednesday starting at 2.15 p.m. So don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, live small and dream big.